Hello guys, Luna here and welcome back to another Hogwarts Legacy video. I've played the game a lot over the last week and have conjured up everything I wish I knew before I started playing the game. I have over 50 beginner player tips and tricks for any new player covering exploration, gear, upgrades and combat. And of course I left the best tip for the very end. However, before we start I will begin with one of my favourite tips, so let's jump into it. You can quickly get down from high places by equipping your broom mid-air to avoid fall damage. Plus, it does look pretty awesome when you do it. And you don't have to be high up either, you can do it from the ground while jumping. So we're going to go on to some combat tips. Always bring a lot of healing potions before doing any main quest or dungeon, as many as you can carry. When in combat, try to use combos instead of individual shots, not only for killing enemies quicker, but it will refill your ancient magic meter. One of the funnest combos is to use Accio before Depulso to throw an enemy off a ledge. If you don't have the proper spell equipped to break an enemy's shield, throwing objects at them will do this for you. You can open your spell menu and change your spells mid-combat if you want to change what you're using. In fact, if you equip different attack spells to all your different spell sets, that will allow you to spam your spells and once you've cycled through around 12 of them, your first spells should be recharged enough to use again, and it's great for using against large single enemies like trolls. Every time you get attacked and can block, make sure to hold down the counter button instead of just press it, as this will allow you to parry and use stupefy, which will break enemy shields and deal damage. You cannot fast travel in combat, but you can equip your broom and fly away if you're having trouble. One of the most overpowered abilities is Petrificus Totalis, which kills smaller enemies instantly and deals damage to bigger enemies while sneaking. Be on the lookout for dueling feats in combat to complete your challenges and earn additional XP. If you're having issues on knowing what to do, you can check the enemies page in your collection to get tips on enemy weaknesses and these will help with your dueling feats like this guy here. So those are some decent combat tips guys, let's go on to some exploration tips and there is a lot to discover in the world of Hogwarts. Use Revelio all the time as there's so much to find in game and you will need to spam the button essentially to find everything. When using Revelio, the spell will make a bell ringing sound if there's a field guide page nearby. Revelio. Oh, there was something else too. A dash of powdered back. You can also use Revelio while flying and the distance you can see is a lot further than if you're on foot. And speaking of field guides, make sure to pick up everyone that you come across, not only if you're just trying to get collectibles, but because they're one of the best additional ways to gain XP in game. One of the first things you should actually do in game when the challenge becomes available around 10 hours or so into the story is collect demigod statues, as collecting all 30 will allow you to unlock lockpicking level 3, which is one of the most useful tools in the game. Start side quests as you come across them, even if you don't plan to play them yet, you can still complete parts of them as you explore. Progress through the main story a while before doing a lot of anything else, as things are locked behind it like brooms, the room of requirement, different spells, talents and the dark arts. Not all quests will give you map markers on where to complete them, so make sure to read the quest descriptions and it will give you some tips. If you select a quest and it's on the map, press the locate on the map button to quickly find it. Class 
Always check out whether you can talk to a teacher after they've taught you a new spell, as you often get some nice extra conversation and background story, which you can easily miss. One of the most overlooked things in the game is forgetting to check your owl post, and this is essentially where missions get updated. Change the time of day at any time by going to the map and pressing wait. This is also good for vendors as their stocks replenish every two and a half days in game so you can change the time quickly in order to do that. It's also useful if you're trying to find things that can only be found at night such as demigod statues and astronomy tables. It's worth your time unlocking all the ancient magic hotspots early as it will upgrade your ancient magic meter to five slots. Also, completing some of the Merlin trials early will increase your gear slots, and it's worth doing at least some of them, as your gear slots are very limited, especially for the amount of stuff there is to find in-game. You don't need to equip Wingardium Leviosa, instead use Accio, because you can use this for attacking enemies, but when you use it on movable objects and you keep the button held down, it will automatically cast Wingardium Leviosa for you. Accio. Wingardium Leviosa. You can roll through crawl spaces to get through them more quickly. Always unlock the chests with an eye on them as they contain 500 coins inside and you need to be invisible in order to open them. The type of gear you get in chests is random like cloaks or gloves, but if you're opening a legendary chest and say you were looking for a specific type of thing, then you can save and keep reloading it until you get the gear type that you want. You can never have enough moonstones as they are needed to conjure items in the room of requirement, so pick them up while exploring. You can upgrade your broom, but you must first complete the side quest flight test. Your broom has a boost, but it does not get depleted if you fly close to the ground. There's no telling what lies in wait for me in there. While exploring caves, always go off the main path to find chests and other good loot. The game has no auto loot, so make sure to pick up items off the ground in case you miss them. Your blood's on Ranrock's hands. Lastly, for exploration, if you're if you're looking for a better looking playthrough, you can turn off everything in the HUD, like the minimap, for example, and everything else that's on screen in the settings. Last guys, what about some tips for gear and upgrades? If you get an armor piece with a question mark, it needs to be revealed at the table in the room of requirement in order to use it. Sell armor as soon as you don't need it as the inventory space is very limited and it's a great way to get coins. Don't worry though, even though you sell the gear, you will permanently unlock the appearance of it in your gear menu. In order to change your armor's appearance, hover over the type of gear and you can press change appearance there on Xbox, you press X. You can turn on and off the hoods of cloaks and robes. You can change your character's appearance once in Hogsmeade. When completing challenges, don't forget to collect the reward, usually new appearance items. A lot of players think it's a new type of gear, but it's actually just the appearance of any of your gear that you can change with these. Learn new spells as soon as they become available, as you will need them for exploring and solving puzzles.
You can unlock four spell slots, so make sure you equip different combinations of spells, like one for combat and one for exploration, which you can quickly switch between in battle. Start breeding animals as soon as the game allows by following Deke's quests in the Room of Requirement, as the offspring can be sold for easy cash. I'll look after you. Also, collecting animals is the cheapest way to upgrade your gear, as feeding and petting them will give you upgrade materials. When potting plants in the Room of Requirement, instead of buying a small, medium and large planter, it's more cost effective to just buy the large planter, as the smaller ones will fit inside of it. Always stock up in potions and buy recipes when you can afford them, and that's the same for any type of recipe in the game. Look around your vivarium, each of them has some conjuration chests to open and free moonstones lying around. Plan your talents before you spend them, as you only have 36 points to spend out of a possible 48. Also, on the same note, the talents tree cannot be respect, so you are stuck with the talents that you choose. However, the most important skill you should learn very early in the game is basic cast mastery, as it lowers the spell cooldown for every spell, or most of them, every time you hit with a regular attack. So it's definitely one of the most useful skills there is. Lastly, the most important tip of the game then, Always tip the busker or the musician while in Hogsmeade, and I'll let you see what happens when you do that. Guys, that is it. That is all of the tips and tricks I could think of for new players in Hogwarts Legacy. If you find this video useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Ranrock has fooled you all to your demise.